You're listening to the Holistic Spaces podcast brought to you by Mindful Design Feng Shui School, episode 182, Bird Symbolism in Feng Shui. Welcome to episode 182 of the Holistic Spaces podcast, where we hope to inspire, educate, and empower you to create your own holistic spaces that nurture and resonate with you. Angie Cho and Laura Morris are the founders of the Mindful Design Feng Shui School. We teach Feng Shui online at mindfuldesignschool.com. We have a six month, 100 hour certification program for, pract- for practitioners and for to be consultants. So be sure to check us out. Go to mindfuldesignschool.com. You can also sign up for our mailing list where we have special offerings only available to newsletter subscribers. We have special content just for them on the newsletter, plus special events. And we have an upcoming Feng Shui Basics five-week course that we hope all of you will join. So be sure to sign up for our mailing list. It is mindfuldesignschool.com. Scroll down to the bottom and join our mailing list. And it's also in the show notes. So we hope to see you soon. So welcome to our episode about birds. I've noticed more and more that people really like birds a lot. What's not to like? (laughs) Yeah, I, I think I think people have always really liked birds because um, yeah. they're magical. They're, they're so cool. Yeah, they are. And, um, you know, living in New York City, I don't hear birds a lot, though. So mm. um, I was recently in Maine and I was like, what is that noise? And Jeremiah, <laughs> my husband's like, that's an owl. I'm like, really? Oh, so, owls are cool. Yeah. So, um, yeah. so there's so many interesting um facts about birds but besides that there's so much symbolism and people are fascinated by birds of course because birds can fly unlike humans we can't that's one thing we can't do we can fly in a plane but we can't fly on our own so birds have often uh, been looked to as very special beings and They are considered a connection to the heavens, the divine, and they also connect us to our environments. And, um, you know, we have, we always get new listeners. So in case you didn't know, feng shui, the words feng shui literally translate to wind and water. And that points to how essential nature and environments and just these fundamental elements of wind and water, breath and hydration, how they're so vital for humans to thrive and this is why feng shui is so vital and important as well because our connection to our environment our connection to nature our connection to birds and flora and fauna all of those things really affect us greatly as humans and and affect how we can survive and thrive and do well in this world So um, we thought we would spend an episode chatting about some birds and their symbolism when it comes to feng shui. So how many birds do we have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight Eight birds. No, it's six, seven. I don't know. (laughs) We'll tell you something like that. Seven birds. Um, So uh, we're going to talk about the rooster, the crane, the magpie, that's three, mm-hmm. phoenix, mm-hmm. peacock, mm-hmm. swallows, and ducks. So that's seven. So we'll start with rooster. So rooster is a well-known bird in most cultures, right? And I think across most cultures, they have a similar meaning mm-hmm. and meaning of protection because the reliable rooster crows every morning you hear the rooster in the morning at the break of day at the end of the darkness of night to welcome a new day so uh, the rooster is always reliable and also can represent protection because they're an indication that the darkness is subsiding and light is coming mm-hmm. and in the chinese system the rooster is also one of the 12 zodiac animals. So um, if you're familiar with the 12 zodiac animals, the rooster is one and roosters get along with dragons. I'm a dragon, so I know. So I like hanging out with roosters. And 
in the zodiac, the energy of the rooster is thought to be very bold, very proud, very masculine, very young, and they're very talkative and um, boisterous personalities. In feng shui, we also use rooster feathers often in protection adjustments, and those are special adjustments that we teach our students in our certification. And the rooster is also related to metal element, and metal element is related to organization, to communication, to um, to precision. So, so the rooster can bring in all of these different elements. Okay, next bird we're going to talk about is the crane. And the crane is known and symbolizes longevity in Asian cultures. And there is legend and myth um, around cranes that they can live long. They can't just live long, they can live a thousand years. And they're, um, they're also used for auspicious as well. If you want to make an auspicious uh, wish, you can, you know, when you make those little origami birds, you're actually a little making those little origami cranes. And if you fold, so I, all of you guys out there, if you want to make a wish, go and fold yourself 1000 origami cranes and then make a wish and it shall be fulfilled. Cranes are, because again, they're, they're connected with the idea of longevity. They're often paired with the turtle which is if you listen to our feng shui symbols podcast that we did, we talk about the turtle, another um, symbol of long life, okay? And wisdom. So they, they're paired together. Our next bird represents joy and that's the magpie. So magpies are well known in Asian culture as a symbol of joy and good luck. Their imagery is super popular. They're even the national bird and symbol of Korea, where my family is from. And the magpie is connected to many different myths and stories that relate to having a great new start to things, especially starts to romantic relationships. So pairs of magpies often re represent a happy, fulfilling partnership or inviting a happy partnership and in general magpies are considered omens of good luck if you see a magpie nest around your home or magpies around your home so the next bird is not exactly a bird that you will see in your backyard it is the phoenix so this is a mythical bird and phoenix are overall symbols of rebirth good luck they're powerful, auspicious symbols. And when you think about the myth of the phoenix, if you've seen Harry Potter, uh, you'll know obviously that they burn down and they are reborn from their ashes. And in ancient China, the phoenix is often paired, for example, at the um, in the Forbidden City, you'll see a uh, to in front of um, temples or buildings, you'll see a dragon and then paired with it will be the phoenix. And the dragon represents the emperor and the phoenix represents the empress. And this bird, which is um, mythical, is also one of the four celestial animals. So the four celestial animals are used in feng shui and many other of the Chinese arts in Taoism as well. And they each represent a different direction and a different element. And the idea is that you can use them to activate sites and to the way you set up your site or your home or how you pick the location of your home and plot of land and the phoenix also often called the red bird or the red raven depending on your school of feng shui is what you would put in the south in some or depending in the front depending on the school again and it's low laying red colored right again because it's a red raven red bird and it represents southern energy and fire energy. And it is, the idea is that this uh, phoenix will protect anything that's coming toward the home, right? So you've got that protection, it's a slight rise, but it's that protective red fire energy. And um, phoenixes are 
again, they're synonymous with good fortune, with opportunity, with luck. So you'll often see that that iconography or that motif in many um, Asian art or, um, you know, any kind of scrolls and stuff. You'll see that as well. And next we have the peacock, an emblem of beauty, of dignity, of good luck and really positive chi. Chi is life force energy. And they're also a status of wealth and rank. So they are also seen as a earthly version of the phoenix that Laura just talked about. They're very beautiful, they're very brilliant. And if you know what a peacock looks like, they have these eyes on their fanned tails and they're just gorgeous uh, peacock feathers. And so the eyes indicate being able to see, see into the world, to have a great depth of wisdom and brilliance. And then um, peacocks that are blue or images of blue peacock feathers, blue green, that like iridescent color can also invite this energy of beauty and wisdom and brilliance into your home and your life, which can in turn offer more visibility. Again, pointing back to this um, the idea of the eyes. So these feathers look like eyes. So what do eyes represent? Being able to be seen more and to be more visible. And, you know, peacocks are quite visible, right? Um, you, you wouldn't be able to miss their brilliant, colorful beauty. And the peacock is also related to the goddess Kuan Yin and there's a few different versions of Kuan Yin, and one is a thousand armed Kuan Yin, and she has a thousand arms to help many, many people. And she's a goddess of compassion. And similarly, like she's connected to the peacock because all, again, all those eyes, the peacock has all the eyes to see, uh, to have that ability to see people in need, many, many, many people in need that need compassion and can help and come to the aid of anyone who's in need. So next, swallows. And swallows overall are connected, very, very connected with what happens in our community. So they're migratory birds. They arrive at a very reliable specific time each spring and many Asian cultures connect swallows with spring. So in feng shui, you know, spring is related to the wood element. It's connected to new beginnings and to family and swallows also have that harmony, that community or family harmony connotation or representation because when you think about those swallows so, like flying through the air, you know, together in their flocks and they're just making these maneuvers, not hitting each other, they're in complete harmony. And of course they're building their little nests uh, up, you know, either in, you know, eaves or barns or cliffs or an old home. You've probably seen them. There's many, there's different kinds of swallows. They have that idea of coming together and working together. And it's actually very auspicious or very lucky to have a swallow's nest on your roof. It invites good luck. And again, with this idea of the arrival of spring and a specific time in um, the Chinese calendar is you pair the imagery of a swallow with wisteria and that signals the arrival of spring. So if you see that in iconography or in imagery, that's, the, that's what it represents is the arrival of spring. And last but not least, we have ducks that represent happy, contented, marital bliss or partnership. And, you know, specifically, if we look at Asian culture, Mandarin ducks are connected to this idea of a blissful partnership and a long lasting partnership because they are said to mate for life. And in Asian culture, you would gift or receive or um, have in your home a pair of mandarin ducks that represent a happy and successful marriage. And in some Asian traditions, um, 
you will have wooden mandarin ducks presented as a wedding gift. And they're often placed in the couple's home and positioned so they face each other. Like, for instance, when I got married, um, we did a variation on this where I think, now I have to remember, my, I think my, my parents bought the ducks, but, <laughs> but I think that they um, gave them to my husband and then he presented the ducks to them. And it was just something that like we did a variation on. Um, and now my parents, you know, because I have two sisters, they have three pairs of wooden ducks in their home from each of our weddings. And so it's a really just a very sweet, I think, um, ritual. And again, like, you know, if you've seen also was that penguin movie where they talk about how penguins mate for mm -hmm. life, Empire Penguin. What was the name of that movie? Um, no, I'm thinking of I'm thinking of probably a different one. I can't remember. Yeah, well, it's I know like what you a, mean. Right. So um, it's often said about a lot of birds that they mate for life. Swans. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So it's just a very cheerful and beautiful symbol and emblem of connection, of partnership. And um, like the story even goes that like if the pair of Mandarin ducks are separated, the other one would the the one that's left alone would mm -hmm. perish of sadness like lovebirds mm -hmm. yeah, yeah yeah definitely birds are birds have a very birds are very powerful symbolism and they are i think they're we're all curious about them they they do have a very magical little quality to them i mean they can make beautiful music and they can fly it's pretty amazing okay so what if you were listening to these and you thought, oh, wow, I would love to have, you know, a pair of this or an imagery of this, how can you use them in your home? So you would think about, just give some thought to the intention. You know, what do you want to create? What do you want to bring into your life? What do you want to bring into your home? Do you want to bring in more love and that, you know, partnership? Do you want to focus on that? Do you want to focus on longevity and, and well-being? maybe maybe just overall auspiciousness, uh, good luck, or maybe protection. So to give that some thought. And then let's go through a couple of areas of the home that you could add them to. So for instance, let's say you did want to focus on partnership love. You could go you could use the kun area, which is the partnership area of the bagua. If you're in your bedroom and you're standing in the door of your bedroom and you're looking in, it's the far right corner of your bedroom. Same thing for your house, just the house might be a little trickier to figure it out, but it's the far right corner of your, of your home. You could place, again, a pair of magpies, mandarin ducks, like we were talking about. You can keep it really easy and you can just find the center of your home to create the energy of the home overall. The center is a really great place to start because it it's um, it reverberates throughout the home. So maybe it's an idea of bringing, you know, a swallows, imagery of swallows again for that harmony or magpies for joy. And if maybe, or family connection, you could pick the family area of the Bagua, which is if your home is a perfect square, it is the far left side, the middle of that far left side wall of your home. You could put imagery of swallows there again to have either new beginnings, that springtime energy or family coming together. And then, you know, a really sort of simple way to bring these in is focusing on the front door or when you come in or outside of the home to protect in, and you could use protection symbols. So roosters, phoenix, you know, that also is auspicious so that when the energy comes in, it could, you know, um, get sort of greeted by uh, a phoenix, you know, if you have, you wanted to put that somewhere and something that you can showcase basically at the front of the home. And, you know, you, again, you can incorporate this, um, this imagery, we're obviously not going to go out and buy a peacock and we're not going to go out and buy roosters. Well, you could, you could just have roosters running around your front lawn, I guess. Oh, only one rooster, by the way, you don't want to have more than one. Um, and then some chickens you would use instead of that, or, I mean, artwork is the easiest. There are some beautiful scrolls and watercolor artwork that you can get of all of these uh, birds. If you, if you research, if you go on, you'll find so many and, you know, they're just stunning. Wallpaper motifs, photographs, ceramics. So you can get them in little ceramic, you know, sculptures or little images, you know, you get them in three-dimensional little images. 
on vases. They often, this motifs will be in um, Asian vases or, um, um, or, you know, tiny figurines as well, like especially those little Mandarin ducks you can get. So lots of ways that you can research, you can find out, you know, you don't have to go in and put never all the birds all over the place, but you can pick one that really spoke to you and pick a spot and play around with some bird energy, bring some magical bird energy into your home. Yeah, that, those are all great ideas. Do you have any bird imagery in your home? Uh, you know what I have actually, um, a long time ago when I was doing the Stephen and Chris show ages ago, I did a thing on the front entrance and I found the most beautiful, it's called a hundred bird scroll. It's actually a very popular image and it literally has a hundred birds on them and each of the birds is represented. So each of the birds we talked about, the swallows are there, there's, you know, the cranes are there, there's a phoenix, there's ducks. And it is supposed to be this, you know, very, you know, auspicious. It's got all of that bird energy of all of them represented in one panel in the scroll. And so I have one bird, I have a bird scroll and, um, and I still, to this day, get emails of people looking for that bird scroll. Interesting. Because they see, they'll see like a repeat from like, that's because it's in syndication and they'll contact me, go, I want to know where this bird scroll is. And I, it, they're really hard to find. You can get them, but um... 100 birds. Yeah. Uh, I don't think I have any bird imagery because I'm not really a big bird fan. That's why I said earlier, um, it's a little, it was a little bit surprising to me. Like, uh, I have a, like my husband is interested in birds, like, and then my friend's husband is interested in birding. And actually my husband's, um, late stepfather, his last name was Bird. And then his mom has a retreat space called the bird's nest mm -hmm. and so um they're very fond of birds and uh once yeah, you get into just... the birding you'll get hooked but it's it's helpful to be i i mean i think people do it in new york city i know i know that where i am there's lots of birds and they wake me up at i have different names for birds the birds that wake me up at uh they start at 3 30 4 o'clock in the morning i call it four o'clock in the morning bird and that is, I think that's a robin. And then of course there's the cardinals that sound like laser beam bird. And it's just like in my, it's on my window. It's like, pew, pew, pew. <laughs> so yeah, birds are fantastic, except for when they try and wake you up at four o'clock in the morning. I know I've been here. I've been hearing more and more birds actually, even in New York city. And I'm like, why are they chirping at 2 AM? Mm -hmm. They're going to wake you up. They're telling you to get up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I hope everyone enjoyed learning about birds and thank you so much for listening to the Holistic Spaces podcast. You can tune in every Monday for a new episode. And if you like our podcasts, we'd love for you to subscribe. We'd love for you to join our mailing list. You can find that in the show notes. You can follow us on Instagram at Mindful Design School. You can rate us, leave a review. All of those things actually really help. So. Uh, please do and share the podcast with others and you can always support the podcast by checking out our certification course we have a six month hundred plus hour feng shui practitioner certification course and we also have little mini courses throughout the year and again if you join our mailing list we have a we have special free courses every now and then so thank you so much for listening and we will see you very soon